What's up? It's Rob Cressy, founder of Bacon Sports, and I've got another special episode for you talking about phase two of Andy Frisella's Live Hard program. And joining me to jam about it, he is the founder of Euphoria, an active lifestyle brand based around the pursuit of happiness. He's also a good friend of mine. Say hello to Brendan Pettit. Brendan, super excited to have you back on the show. Yeah, man. Excited to be here. What's good, Mr. Cressy? How you doing? I'm doing amazing. And this is the third of what will be four podcasts that you and I are doing together on our journey of finishing the Live Hard program. And if you did not listen to the other ones, uh, we started this when we completed 75 Hard, which is a mental toughness challenge. And then that, um, that ends up wrapping into a larger mental toughness challenge program actually called the live hard program uh if you're not familiar with it please check it out um andy frisella has a lot on his instagram account and phase two was just like 75 hard in terms of what we had to do so to frame this here's what we're working with every day for 30 days with zero compromise we got to drink a gallon of water work out twice a day 45 minutes inside 45 minutes outside read 10 pages of a personal development or entrepreneurship book, follow a diet with no cheat meals and no alcohol. And we also had to take a progress picture. So with that in mind, what I wanted to do is have a candid conversation on our experience because phase two for me was different than any of the other phases because of the maturation that we've each had. Yeah. Um, it was, it was an interesting one for me. I would say out of all of them, it was, it was like the easiest and the hardest at the same time. Cause I feel like it was, it was a little bit eerie for me. Um, because I felt like I was sort of in the routine of doing a lot of this stuff. Um, what was funny was the progress pick actually was the hardest thing for me to keep up with. Cause I wasn't used to taking the pictures, <laughs> but yeah, we can get into it, man, because it, it, was, it was definitely an interesting journey. I've gotten used to the gallon of water, though. I, I can say that I finally have, like, a solid flow for that after this third time around. So, <laughs> so the water flow is an appropriate word because, like you, I'm used to it, but the big challenge being the flow of the number of times you have to go to the bathroom. And God forbid if I'm also drinking coffee in the morning because the way that I traditionally do, and I've followed the exact same – um, routine every single day through 75 hard through phase one and phase two. And for me, that is, I've got a phrase, start hard. So I'm starting early. I was getting up at 5.03 AM to get in my 10 pages of reading and then do my 45 minute outdoor workout and then my 45 minute indoor workout. And while all that's going on, drinking water while I'm reading, water during my outdoor workout, water during my indoor workout, and then water with my protein in my green supplement. So I've already drank five eighths of the amount of one gallon of water before 7.30 in the morning. Then you add on two cups of coffee and it's like, ruh row. (laughs) Yeah, I'm sure. I I didn't do it quite as aggressive in the mornings um, because a lot of my meetings will stack up. So after 8 a.m., a lot of the the times, like Monday through Wednesday, I have uh, meetings and you know, my, my team meetings, a lot of like check-in leadership meetings and all these different things. So there's no way I could have had that amount of consumption of water without having to run to the bathroom every two minutes. Right. Um, but I, I think, I think both of us are on the same page with kind of the, the do what works and, and stick with what works. Cause I didn't try to like reframe everything that I was doing into squeezing things into the morning or anything like that. I, uh, me and you have done this a little differently in that I didn't stack a lot of the stuff in the morning. I, I actually stack more of my like workouts and different things in the afternoon. Um, I did have a, a solid morning routine where I'd get up, do some breathing. Um, on my way in, I, I take the train into the city. I would read and do a lot of my reading. Then if I didn't travel to the office for whatever reason, I would just do it in the living room. Um, or I'd make plans to read in the afternoon. So like there was definitely some, some switching up depending on uh, where I was going to be for work. But I would say that I found a pretty good flow with doing a lot of my like workouts and different things like that in the afternoon. 
um, getting some walking in, especially in the city, even in the rain, which was always fun uh, in Portland. <laughs> but yeah, it was it was good. It was it was a nice little. Um, I don't know. I, I stuck with what worked. I think this time around, it sounds like you did the same. You didn't really veer off the the path. Correct, because I'm a creature of habit. And when I look at what does it take to be successful, we'll do the same things over and over and over again, and you'll get the results that you're looking for. And if I saw success in 75 hard and in phase one and in phase two, then I'm going to go with what serves me. And Absolutely. I wanted to actually step back for a second and talk about my mindset going in. So I actually started this on January 3rd. And this was very calculated because I wanted to start the year off strong. You hear everyone who creates these resolutions, and I'm not a resolutions person. I'm a someone who, when I want to improve something, I do it now. I don't need a, a time to do it. But momentum is a real thing. So I'm like, all right, I'm going to start the year doing phase two. It's going to build some real positive momentum because like you and I have seen through 75 hard in phase one, amazing things happen in your life. And you're like, huh, is it any coincidence that when I'm the best version of myself, every other area of my life is amazing? So when I look oh. at it, I actually, I like to write down notes while the things are going on so that I can recall them. And I said my mindset going in was confident. I did not have as much trepidation. Like 75 hard, I was like, what in the world am I getting into? And in phase one, I was more confident, but then they added on some more things. So there are still a lot of monsters there, like the five minutes of cold showers. You're like, wow, this is a lot. But then once it got to phase two, I came in confident, didn't have trepidation. And quite frankly, I was looking forward to optimizing, uh, especially at the beginning of the year, because I knew the positive impact that it would have. And I actually wrote down on day one, welcome back, old friend. So it's five in the morning, it's dark outside, and I'm doing a 45 minute outdoor workout with ski, like a ski jacket on gloves and a hat and a water bottle. And I'm just like, well, I've been here many times. And I think that's actually the amazing part about this because my bitch voice was actually making noise on day one at that early. And you know what it does? It teaches you to get comfortable being uncomfortable, even if we've done it, what would be 105 times so far this year. And it's one of those things you've got to continually be making deposits on. 100%. Yeah, I, I totally agree with that. And I wanted to go back to the no resolutions thing that you said too, because I, I, I agree with you. Like I used to be sort of a new year's resolutioner, if you want to call it that. And I think what it's really about, what the mindset shift that has taken place of this last year is it's, it's consistency over time, right? It's just building the good habits, building the consistency so that you don't have to set these massive resolutions. You don't have to try to uh, overcome this big mountain at the beginning of the year. You're just consistency, consistency, and all you have to do is tweak a little bit and tweak a little bit and tweak a little bit as you go along. And I think that's what this program has really taught us is like, is it you you definitely get stretched that first 75 days and it, it's it really stretches that rubber band like it's a new rubber band you really get stretched far but then as you your elasticity and flexibility starts to to grow now now that we're being more consistent in a lot of the areas that are within the program it just becomes easier to go yeah i'm gonna run like that extra mile i'm gonna walk that extra steps today i'm gonna go do this outdoor workout a little bit harder than I would have before. And you start to really just start to kind of increase in, in little increments and that over time compounds. And, you know, I think to your point, we're starting to see massive results just from um, not only the self-confidence that it's building, but just our ability to, I guess, I guess that's the best thing to say is it is, it's just the self-confidence thing. And it's like that aura that creates around you. Um, that you're able to go out into the world with and, and share your message, share your brand and do the things that you need to do, you know? And I'll even yes and this. So it 100% is self-confidence, but it's also earned confidence. And exactly. they say, how do you become more confident? If you want to become more confident, do 75 hard, do the live hard program because you pay your dues daily. It's why every single day when I'm doing my workouts and I do my picture to show that I did it and I say dues paid, because that's what success is. And I love it. You said consistency over time. And that's one of the things that I'm extremely good at is consistency. 
I show up every single day and it's the process. And so often we we're going for this goal in this giant mountain, but how do you get there? We're like, we're just worried about getting to the top without saying, can we enjoy the journey? What do I have to do today? What do I have to do in this exact moment? And it's really this exact moment where these micro decisions are made that is the game changer that you, you really learn here. So for example, day one, it's 5.02 a.m. or 5.03 a.m. and I don't wanna go work out. It's like, I don't wanna go do an outdoor workout right now, so I have the decision. Do I sit there and sit on the couch and watch Sports Center, or do I though go and put my clothes on and go work out outside? And the answer is I go work out because I already made the decision the night before to lay my clothes out. So the first decision was already made for me. I didn't have to sit there on the couch and been like, oh, well, my wife's sleeping and I don't want to wake her up because that's where my gym clothes are and I don't want to look in the dark. And like, you, have to, you really just start. Um, rationalizing with yourself the excuses. So what this does is it removes the excuses from your life because the absolute nature in this. And this is something that in 75 hard was a, was a source of anxiety for me. And as it went to phase two, it was less anxiety and more confidence because I knew I could do it because there is no compromise. You screw up on one thing, one picture, one thing of water, one workout, one cheat meal, one anything. You go back to zero. And at the point where we are right now, going back to zero, you do not want to be going back to zero. A hundred percent. No. Uh, yeah. And, and it, again, it's just, it, it is, it's the consistency, man. I think when you build that, that earned confidence starts to build up. Um, even in that, in the third, last 30 day sprint, you know, me and you had a conversation probably I don't know what a week before that or two weeks before that. And I was talking in a totally different tone. I had totally different things on my mind. I was, uh, there was almost like a fog or a haze that I had going on because I'm in a lot of transitional periods with my business, with things that I'm trying to get into the next phase, other businesses I'm trying to start. Um, which by the way, if you want to start to really draw the lines back to certain processes and things like all the confidence in the, the clarity on a lot of those came from the fact that I had this earned confidence that I didn't have uh, glass ceilings on myself. I knew that I could, I could sort of attack anything I needed to. And I've, I've gotten more confidence to go into other areas and uncomfortable areas of my life to start to grow as well. So that's a, obviously a side note. Um, but yeah, the earned confidence is huge, man. I mean, I, I think even in these 30 day sprints, it, there's just an amount of momentum that starts to build um, that you don't really want to let go of. I know, you know, we've talked about it multiple times and I think you've been better about it than me, but it, it, in the last couple rounds of this, it's, it's almost as if like you, I go up on this peak and then like we get done and then I'm like donuts, pizza, beer. Yeah. Like, let's get back, like, let's get back to life. But then what I've realized through doing this is that that's not really what serves me either. So it's the consistency over time that serves me. So yes, you know, like I, I celebrated my birthday yesterday. Did I have some cake? Of course. Did I, did I have a beer? Of course. But I still wanted to get a workout in. I still, you know, I still wanted to get my reading in, my gallon of water. I didn't just take off because it was my birthday because I know that that consistency leads to results. And it's sort of like a no days off mentality in a lot of ways. Um, or, or like you have to earn it right? Don't, you don't go get a beer unless you've done what you need to do before that, right? And that's really what starts to tweak your mindset. That after 75 hard, I, I think I crashed hard. And Andy talks about it too in some of his podcasts at the post 75 hard. He says, you guys are going to go up on this thing. You're going to come off it the most confident you've ever been. And then you're going to go, yeah, but I want to go back to all this other stuff that I used to do and go back to your comfort zone. And I did a little bit. Um, it took that second round to really pull, extract that back out of me. And then this last time it's like, okay, I'm done. I'm done like letting myself crash and not allowing myself to be in my peak state all the time. Um, so that's really what's shifted with me on this last time because of our conversation pre me getting into it. And then post it's like, I feel so good. I don't, and things, so many things are going right in my life right now that it's almost like, I don't, I can't afford to take days off. With and what it does is it, is it raises your standard because you've lived at this high level. So you know what the best version of yourself looks like. 
and you're like, all right, I'm crushing right now. That doesn't mean I can't eat a piece of pizza, but I think about it with like fried food. That's something that's not part of the diet when I'm doing 75 hard. So anything that's fried. And now when I go out, my mindset isn't, I want fried food because it doesn't serve me. It was the older version of myself. And it doesn't mean that fried food's bad or that I will never have it. But what it does is it raises your thermostat for your entire life in all areas. So your self-awareness is there. So your standard and certainly the standard that you and I have with each other and everything, it's one of the reasons why I love chatting with you and why we're friends because we're on the same level. And what you realize is when you go through 75 Hard and the Live Hard program, your level rises and all of a sudden you see the world so differently than everyone else because you're concerned about you and what you need to do to be successful. You're not, about, you're not concerned about others and you're a lot more conscious because we have to be conscious of every second of the day when we're going through phase two or any of these programs because of the absolute nature of it. Absolutely, man. Um, and, and obviously, like, I don't know if you want to go too far into like each phase of, of the thing, because I think we've talked about it on the other podcast. But I think the biggest thing that I've seen is because I'm um, a part of a, uh, an accountability group through a mastermind that I'm a part of. And what I've started to see with that is me uh, consistently showing up with green check marks on all of my to-do lists, all of the rocks that I've set, like the things that I need to get accomplished. Because we come with basically, here's what I'm trying to get done this week. Um, and I have built into that, I have my stack of daily habits that go into 75 hard, go into any of this stuff, phase two. And so I've been accountable in, in letting them know um, what I've been doing. And since then, um, one of the people in my accountability group, um, uh, Alicia, a good friend of mine, she, she started 75 hard seeing some of the results and the confidence and the momentum I've gained because she also struggled with um, sort of what I used to struggle with, which is just sticking to your calendar, um, being consistent, you know, getting, checking things off the list, like getting distracted, like all these different things that once you just commit and you say, I'm going to do this no matter what, I'm going to put myself in an uncomfortable situation and I'm just going to be disciplined and start to build these habits over time. Like you, she's noticed the big shift in me and she notices that every week I come with, you know, 95% checked off plus and sometimes a hundred and, you know, and, and she knows what I'm working on. I'm work. I got three different businesses going right now, three different sources of income, three different, like I'm, I'm spread out. And so when you start to come with that raised, like to your point, that raised sort of degree mark, like you, you're raising the temperature for everybody. It makes the room hotter and it makes everybody go, Oh, like maybe I should adjust and maybe I should uh, raise my game and things like that. And I, I think I'm starting to realize the impact that sort of leading by example and showing up every week is also having to my inner circle and some of the, the, the things and circles that I'm involved in. So it's pretty cool. Well, that's actually great because I'm experiencing something very similar. So because of 75 hard, I'm not going to say only because of, but in before phase two and during phase two, I got hired as a high performance coach for um, a team for an agency out in New York. Shout out to all my friends at Bold Worldwide. And here's what it was. I was teaching success mindset, habits, and routines. How do you make someone better at their job? Well, the way that you make them better at their job is making them better at their overall life. So looking at, um, do you visualize, meditate, gratitude, fitness, finance, what is the narrative in your head? Is it bitch voice? Are you living in action? Are you breaking things down on the micro? So all of the different things that I learned in 75 hard and then in phase one, and I have to imagine this contributed to why I was able to land this opportunity to then teach others because guess what? Imagine what the standard is for the group of people that I'm leading on a twice a week basis when we roll in and it's like, all right, this is how we get down. This is the success mindset. And it comes from this foundation of this confidence because so often the narrative that we tell ourselves is comfortable. It's like, oh, mm -hmm. Rob, you know what? You don't have to work out today. You've worked out five days in a row. You're going to be good. And you're like, you know what? You are right. I'm just going to sit here. I'm not going to work out today. 
and then maybe the next day comes and you went out at night that night and you're a little hungover the next day and you're like, oh man, I'm hungover. I don't want to do this now. Now, all of a sudden, that decision you just made wasn't one day, it's now two days. And guess what? You've just started to build negative momentum. So with all of this, I'm teaching this stuff now and just like you, and this is having legitimate impact on other people's lives because oftentimes you don't have someone in your corner saying, one, I believe in you, two, I'm going to call you out, three, you know I should call you out because you're the one that's in charge of this, but then guess what? Their standard starts to rise and I 100% credit 75 hard phase one in phase two, and I'll actually get to a challenge. So this is, I was doing these calls for one hour a morning, Tuesdays and Thursdays at 8 a.m. my time. And they're for one hour. But guess what? We said that I work out in the mornings getting both of these done. So even when waking up at 5 a.m., it is not easy to read your 10 pages, work out 45 minutes inside, 45 minutes outside, shower, and get ready for one of these calls. So it became a challenge for me, but at the same time, it became such a, a source of inspiration for me because like I get home at like 7.37 and I have to be on camera leading a group of anything from seven to 15 people on these personal development opportunities and i'm like listen guys i just worked out for an hour and a half in the freezing cold so let's get after it oh yeah i'm sure that tweaks your mindset pretty good to uh, get ready for something like that like you're pretty much ready for anything after you've gone through that uh and yours was brutal man like from the outside looking in i mean yeah i had to deal with some rain out here in portland but it was nothing compared to that frigid like single digit probably sometimes even less <laughs> cold that you had to deal with man it was so one of the challenges and I remember thinking hearing this on 75 hard Rob why did you start now it was going into Chicago summer and everyone sees the reasons why you shouldn't do anything the festivals the concerts the drinking the Cubs games the all the stuff vacations so there's always a reason why you shouldn't do it but looking into this you look at the 45 minute outdoor workout and for me a lot of them are 45 minute walks in the morning and the challenge became it is cold as crap in Chicago. And multiple times, my water bottle froze. It was that cold. I remember the lowest it got was negative two degrees, and I actually wore ski goggles. And it's funny because the cold weather doesn't bother me. I'm a year-round biker. I'm a year-round griller. So irregardless of what it's like, unless there's like an insane amount of snow on the ground, I'm going to be riding my bike everywhere. So I'm a little bit acclimated to it, but 5 a.m. It is really cold at 5 a.m. Even when it's like 20 degrees on the day, it's like zero degrees at 5 a.m. So because of it, that really became a way of me getting comfortable being uncomfortable. And then I turned it into a game. I started to have fun. So I was always taking pictures in the morning when I'm doing my outdoor workouts. When I wore the ski goggles, when it was so cold out, I had the time of my life. Because how many times in your life have you had fun rocking ski goggles? The answer to me is 100% of the time. So even if it's two degrees, negative two degrees outside, I'm wearing ski goggles. There's nobody on the streets. I'm taking pictures. My hands hurt trying to take pictures when I take my gloves off. And while most people might say, oh, my God, that's such a negative, for me, it was a zero. It's the weirdest thing that what limits and disturbs others didn't bother me because as Andy preaches a million times, the conditions are not always going to be perfect. So I was like, conditions aren't going to be perfect. It's Chicago in January. It is what it is. Right. A hundred percent, man. And dude, it's just, again, it's committing to it, not listening to the bitch voice and raising your game and doing it over time consistently just pays off. I think the biggest thing for me, um, and, and I actually went back and listened to this, my business partner, Sean, recommended uh, a podcast from Andy Frisella. His, I think it was episode nine. So like back in the day, like 2015, somewhere around there. And it was, it was like, um, I, I can't remember what he, what he labeled it. It's called like kill, like kill the day or, or like, it's one of those like, like, like take the day or, or one of those podcasts, but it wasn't, it wasn't the one where he, he talks about just the task list 
But what he talks about is the difference between being, uh, being busy and being productive, right? And being consistent, being consistently productive, right? So that, that has hit home with me, especially since po we're getting into like the post phase of this and I'm trying to stay consistent. I, I think a lot of the consistency that goes into this obviously is just habit building and then not listening to your bitch voice. I think we've gone over that time and time again. That's a very obvious thing. But I think it's also making sure you're doing the right things for the right reasons consistently as well and not just staying busy to stay busy, not just doing this kind of workout to do a workout, but the intentionality behind it and setting some goals and, and doing that. That's really what I I think in each phase of this, I've leveled up why I'm doing this, not just to do it for the program, but for me, like, what am I trying to accomplish with my health? Am I like, I'm, for me, it's like, I'm trying to be able to run full court basketball games, no problem, no issue. My legs are under me, like my, my spring and my step is there. Like, that's my goal. So my leg workouts are geared towards that. My, my cardio and my basketball, how often I play is geared towards that. You know what I mean? And, and my walking, when I walk in the city um, and do stairs sometimes outside of my neighborhood, all of that has to do with that goal. And I think when I started it, I started it for the sake of getting consistent. But now it's like, well, how can I make this work for me based on my personal goals and not just being busy and just doing it to do it? To say I did it, but doing it with intentionality and, and reasoning behind it, right? Based on my goals and what I'm trying to accomplish. I, I don't know if that's framing has, has sort of changed for you as well over time, but I think that's something huge that I got out of this last time. I will tell you sure. that that is one of the biggest things anyone can learn. When I'm talking to the bold team, it is we are intentional about everything that we do. I think about my branding coach, Gil. And the quote that he taught me, live by design, not by default. And when you break that down, what that means is you are intentional about the design of your life. You're not just going with the flow. And when I think about the rest of the world, they go with the flow on everything. Uh, everything is thrown at them. The news, social media, TV, Netflix. It's just, boom, a constant barrage of it. And they're not as intentional about their time and their effort in all areas of their life because it's easy to not be intentional and that's the thing it's way easier to not have to worry about these things and do these things because guess what this is called 75 hard for a reason because it is hard as crap and what makes me smile in this moment right now is knowing that something that is hard as crap you and i are talking about like it is second nature so don't let the the ease of which we are speaking diminish how incredibly hard this is. It's literally mm -hmm. like we are accustomed to the crucible of the fire and paying our dues because we're so intentional about our success, about our mindset, about our earned confidence, because what we are doing right now, no one can ever take away from us and we will have for the rest of our lives. And Andy said it, if you go all in on 75 hard, it will change your life. And I was like, all right, 75 days to change my life forever. Sign me up. And then all of a sudden he's like, and by the way, we also have the larger program. And I'm like, how can I not do this? If I was the best version of myself in 75 days, then I want to be able to, to take a turn from Jesse Itzler, build my life resume, put this on my life resume as something. And guess what? Boom, we're crushing this. Right. And, and that's really what I wanted to, to note with that is, and we had a conversation the other day, one-on-one -on -one, where we talked about some of the things going on. We, we caught up about like all the great things that are starting to happen and come to fruition and, and like the momentum we're starting to build in a lot of areas of our life. And I brought up an analogy of like the bamboo growing, right. And how it takes like five years for bamboo to grow. But the last five weeks, it does like 90% of it. That's when 90% of the growth happens. And it doesn't mean that you're not watering it and feeding it and, and taking care of it through those five years. But it's like that last five weeks when things start to hit, it's because of all the intentionality and consistency you put in on the front end. And that's what we're sort of starting to see over this last 12 months is like that transition, not only from a confidence standpoint, but the consistency is starting to lead to more confidence, which leads to better conversations, which leads to, you know what I mean? Um, and, and, and then just our, our actual attack mode, like, like what we're willing to get ourselves into. And 
um, say yes to and, you know, go after. Both of us have um, major speaking engagements on the horizon. Both of us are starting to do things that maybe a year, 18 months ago would have been severely uncomfortable for us and, and we wouldn't have felt like we were prepared for. But I think after this, even though it's just, there are totally different things associated with the program itself, I'm, I, the, the mode I've gotten into and the situations I've, I've been willing to put myself into outside of the program have set me up for more success and set me up for better conversations and more opportunities like outside of it. And it's huge, man. Like it's, it's immeasurable how, how fast things can start to change and how much momentum um, you can pick up just by creating a little bit of consistency, watering that plant every day. You know what I mean? And then eventually it just starts to hit and that confidence and that momentum just starts to build and build and build um, to where you feel like you can attack anything. Like I feel like I could go on stage tomorrow at the conference I'm speaking at this summer and crush it, you know, because I've been putting in so much consistent work. I've been saying yes to everything. Like I'm just hitting it hard. And it doesn't mean I don't get nervous. It doesn't mean that I don't have that bitch voice. It doesn't mean that I don't experience some of that stuff, um, which I think nerves are good. Um, anyway, because it means you care, but you see, you know what I mean? They just, you're really building that momentum and it just sits there as like a, yep, let's do it. I don't, I, of course I'll say yes. You know, it doesn't, it's not even a second thought about it. I love the way that you said that because one, we experience the exact same things that every other person does. The difference is we are trained to take action at the same time we are also thinking differently. It doesn't mean that the bitch voice doesn't pop up because it does and in just different ways. Uh, one of my favorite quotes, uh, nothing great ever came from your comfort zone. So we are very comfortable at being uncomfortable and we're continually getting uncomfortable. And the way that I really like to try and frame this is discomfort doesn't get easier. What does is the action we take. It's always uncomfortable but you and I are willing to take that first step. And I always think about uh, the movie Star is Born when uh, Bradley Cooper's character is like, hey, Lady Gaga, come on stage in front of everybody. And she just stands on the side of the stage frozen. And it's like, it's her moment. And she just, you can see the wheels turning in her head. The bitch voice is here. The other side, the other voice is here until she finally takes that one step. And you and I and everybody else part of 75 Hard and Live Hard we are becoming masters at that first step because what the first step does is it starts to build momentum because one is always greater than zero and we're willing to get past the things that would limit and disturb others. And oh, by the way, we're continually growing and doing new things. So we're on a different plane and we're walking around with this aura of confidence that is I won't say it's immeasurable, but it's, it's ridiculous. Like I walk around in my own world. Right. Yeah. And you just walk around knowing that the reset button is so much easier. Like, do I, do I, um, not hit everything that I want to hit sometimes? Sure. Do I not have the greatest workout ever every day? Sure. Like, do I get pissed off? Sure. Do I get sad? Sure. Do I get depressed? You know, all of the same things happen, but that, um, the recovery time, the time it takes for me to reset my mind, the the habits I've built to know how to do that, things like meditation, breathing exercises, um, going on walks, all the workouts, what's funny is what you'll realize is it actually takes you out of your element so that you have to almost like reset. And it, it ends up being the best thing for you, no matter when you do it throughout your day, because it just gives you that mental reset, the endorphins are flowing, and all of a sudden, like you just hit like a completely different stride. So if, if I had a stressful day up until the afternoon, then I can go, I'll go work out at 2, 2 p.m., do all my stuff, and by the end of it, I'm feeling amazing, like nothing happened. You know what I mean? So there's a lot of benefits to that as well. Not only that, but obviously, you know, a lot of science is coming out about just taking care of yourself and your body and, you know, um, like not eat, like if you're eating the right foods, you're giving your brain the right sort of energy and fuel, then that's also going to benefit you. And I've seen tremendous results from that, not only from a physical, just feeling better, but I feel like the mental clarity there, the, I'm less cloudy, I'm, I'm quicker to be able to come up with that thing I was trying to think of or that idea or 
those types of things. So it just helps in a lot of other areas as well, um, not just physical. Um, but yeah, that mental capacity as well. There's no cloudy. It When you're on this, there is not clouds in your brain because there's not time to think about the clouds. <laughs> it's like you're- well, We're both so busy now too. It's like it, you just have to keep it going. There's no time to to sit and think and dwell and you know create a lot of that. I think, I think an idle mind, I've heard this quote before, an idle mind is a dangerous mind. And I think it's, the, it's, it's a paramount quote because I think it's so true. Like, like when you sit- and dwell and second guess and say, I'll just stay home today. And then you're constantly thinking and thinking and thinking and don't get out of your own way. It really starts to hold you back and you can really start to create narratives and, and pathways in your brain that don't even really exist or, you know what I mean? It, it, you can almost make up your own storyline, um, especially about yourself and it's not very healthy. So I think the busier you can be and the more productive you can be and the more consistent habits you're doing over time, it will help clear all that up, I think. So I want to talk about the workout side of things because there were some new additions for me in phase two. One, uh, we got a Peloton, which was incredible. I had never been someone who's been in spin classes. I am not what you would consider the traditional person for that. But you know what I am the traditional person for? Convenience for fitness. The bitch voice of why you don't go work out. Guess what? When you have a Peloton, in your basement, chilling right there, there is zero excuse whatsoever. So I found that I love the Peloton. I cannot recommend it enough. The community that is there, the positivity that they throw out is out of this world. On top of, it's a great different workout because one of the things that I would like more of is variety in working out. Uh, number two, I uh, subscribed to an app called the Transform app and it's by Chris and Heidi Powell, and I was first introduced to it when I was at Arte Syndicate Live, um, one of the uh, groups that I'm part of, and I highly, highly recommend it because what it was is essentially a step-by-step -step fitness guide. It says, what do you want to accomplish? And I was like, oh, I want to get a beach body, let's call it. And then boom, I put it in, put in my weight, my height, and it created the workout program for me every single day. So now when I went to the gym, it would say, all right, Rob, we've got five of five of uh, dumbbell bench press, and then we're doing squats, and then we're doing burpees, and then we're doing this. So I didn't have to think. All I had to do was follow the action of it. And that's such an important thing in gym because I remember when I started 75 Hard, I said, all right, if I'm going to be working out 45 minutes inside every single day, I don't want to waste this. I don't want to just show up and do nothing. So with this, I was laser focused and I saw results right there. Uh, I found that I was cool with doing more cardio, being the Peloton, than lifting. Everything's sort of a, a pulling of the levers there. And then here is the huge one that is still paying dividends to this day. Uh, it was the unfortunate passing of Kobe Bryant. And it is something that uh, I wasn't the biggest Kobe fan, but mentally I respect Kobe's greatness. I love basketball. I love what Kobe has done for so many different things in the world. And when I saw the way that everyone was mourning, everyone mourns differently. But what I've learned, and certainly this happening during the middle of phase two, I was like, what is the best way that I can honor Kobe? And I was like, you know what? Kobe would rip your heart out on a Monday that the day after he, his unfortunate passing, he would be in the gym. He'd be working out. He'd be crushing it. He's got that mama mentality. So I believe this was on the last seven days or eight days of my phase two. I adopted the mama mentality. Every single set, I did at least one extra rep in the name of mama mentality. And guess what? I am still doing one extra rep every single set in the name of mama mentality. And I don't think this is going to leave me because it's such a simple trigger. And then guess what? This is actually something that uh, I learned and or taught with the bold team with my high performance calls is all of a sudden I was a little bit more intentional about what the extra rep meant. So let's say it's mm -hmm. five of five and I'm like, boom, I'm doing this one for mama mentality. And then I'm like, well, what else can I do an extra one for? So now I'm doing an extra rep for momentum and confidence. 
And I was always doing one extra rep at the end of all of my sets because that's how you get ahead. So now it's momentum and confidence. Then I'm doing it for my dreams. I'm doing one for my wife. I was doing one for the bold sales team. So all of a sudden I'm doing like three or four extra reps on every single set because I became intentional about what they meant. It wasn't just, I'm doing number six. It was momentum and confidence. And to this day, this morning, I'm doing boom, momentum and confidence. And you're like, well, how in the world does that work? Guess what? If my intentionality and mindset goes momentum and confidence, imagine saying that five extra times while you're working out. Guess what's probably going to happen? A little bit more momentum and confidence. Oh, absolutely, man. I love that. Um, I'm gonna have to. I'm gonna have to probably take a page out of that book, dude, because that's that's awesome. Um, I, I feel like I. I created a lot more consistency around my cardio game. I think the competition aspect of me trying to get more basketball under my belt and get more um, cardio discipline and things like that really helped. Um, I also read uh, one of our favorite books, which is Relentless, um, right at the beginning of, of getting into this next, this last phase. And um, so especially after reading that book, I remember texting you and being like, dude, I walked into the gym today and just dominated these people. Like, and that was what I tried to do every single time I walked in. And sometimes in the gym environment, people, you know, if they're not taking it seriously, you look like kind of an asshole. But at the same time, I was kind of like, you know what, like my mentality is in such a place that like, if you didn't come in here to win, then like, you're going to leave a loser basically <laughs> like it's that's that was my mentality and and I also really stayed consistency uh or, or consistent on like how I went in and, and started my my warm-up like how I shot like how many free throws I took like where I took my shots from um how I warmed up and stretched because my my physical therapy part like the the amount of sort of soreness and tightness in my hips and my legs over time especially now that I'm in my my mid-30s um, it's starting to catch up. So I'm trying to be more intentional about the like staying loose and, and, and while staying active and more, having more cardio. And so all of those things combined, really, I really stepped up my game. Um, and I played a few full court basketball games with some rec leagues out in Portland um, with a friend of mine and did really well. Um, so at the end of all this, I was I was really surprised that just it's just like just the daily stuff, even down to the competition when we were in the mode in, in just a pickup game, how intentional I was on playing really hard defense. Because you know how it goes. If, you're, if your cardio is down and you're tired, the last thing you want to do is shuffle your feet to try to keep up with somebody on defense, right? But like that, that tweak of like, I'm not going to fucking let this guy win. <laughs> like just, I turned it on and I would just, shuffle, 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 cardio, cardio, sprint, like defense. It was just, I don't know, there was something about it. it. I just turned on another level and I feel like that really helped me get my cardio where it needed to go. And I also improved a lot of points in my game, I feel like. So I think, you know, this upcoming season in the summer, I'm probably going to join a rec league a uh, little higher level and see if I can, uh, you know, drop some, uh, some wet J's on them here in the Portland area. So We'll see. <laughs> I, I love that. And you very much, that's my mindset. My game is predicated on one, my fitness level is as good or better than anybody that's out there. Uh, two, I'm going to try. My effort is always there. I always play defense. Uh, I've got great court vision. So I see the ball. I'm a good team player. So I'm a great gel when it comes to how you win in the team. And I love it. You may have just said my favorite quote I've ever heard from you. You if you didn't come in to win, then you're gonna then you're gonna leave a loser, and that is so correct. And you also mentioned something about routine, and there's three things that I wanted to talk about that uh, also got added to my routine. One, when I was doing my outdoor workouts, I started every single one by listening to Ryan Holiday's podcast, The Daily Stoic. It is a three to four minute uh, just nugget of stoicism and what i mean is three or four minutes it is only four minutes long so i can literally just walk out my place and it's done already and what it did is if you've never read any ryan holiday books i highly highly recommend it my favorite book of all time or one of is obstacles the way and then he's got ego as the enemy and then stillness is the key and he's got a few others there 
but Stoic philosophy is very much aligned with the mindset of 75 hard and the live hard program. So that's something that I'm continuing to do today because you can control your positive inputs. It's five in the morning, I'm working outside. So boom, there's some stoicism. And then number two is I audited my boot sequence. And one thing that's becoming a significantly larger and more impactful part of my life is uh, affirmations and self-love and self-belief. So what I created was a boot sequence that think of yourself like a computer. If you shut down at night, you gotta, you gotta get back up and reboot in the morning. All right, if we wanna be successful, what does your reboot sequence look like? We all have morning routines, but uh, one of my favorite books is also The Power of Consistency by Weldon Long. And it's a book that talks about one of the reasons why people don't achieve their dreams is they're not consistent enough at the awareness of it. How often are you reading about your dreams and the person you are and the person you want to be? And then I started to learn a lot more about I am affirmations, where you start to declare the person that you are and the person that you want to be. So I'm like, all right, well, as part of my routine, when do I have 10 minutes to be able to read these things? And I was like, huh, I'm going to listen to the Daily Stoic for four minutes. And then for 10 minutes, I'm going to read the consistency to my dreams in my boot sequence of positive affirmations. And guess what? Within 15 minutes of me being outside, all of a sudden, I'm not worrying about the cold because I'm hearing something amazing about stoicism. And then I'm saying, I am worthy. I am positive energy. I am flexible and fluid. I am becoming the man I am meant to be. And all of these different things just start stacking, stacking. And then the last thing that actually ended up coming was a shout out to my man, Billy Bowie. Um, right around the end of December, he had this like, uh, e this easel board that was tearaway paper that you could then throw on your wall. And I was like, oh, I'm a creative. I like that. I'm like, I don't know what you would do with this. So I just bought it. And all of a sudden I turned it into a habits board where vertically I would list every number of the day, one, two, three, four, five, all the way down to 31. And at the top, I would have nine habits that I wanted to do on a daily basis. One of them being I finished phase two, which was another uh, way to make sure that I had checks and balances. So there was no way that I didn't do it. And this has become an absolute game changer because now I have a visual awareness of the things I want to do on a daily basis on top of my mm -hmm. Evernote file, which says everything I want to do on a daily basis on top of my own internal barometer that says, this is the things that I do on a daily basis. So I've now just stacked three ways to be accountable and intentional to earn my confidence. And it's been an absolute game changer. Yeah, I love it. I, I ended up taking a page out of that book too um, and doing the, the chalkboard wall. Um, we had sort of that, that chalk wall paint. And so I, I drew out the same thing where top down, I had uh, all of my habits. So I had obviously the, the phase two and then I had a couple others sprinkled in like, like breathing exercises and different things like that. Um, things that I really wanted to get done. Um, and yeah, it was great. It was a great visual because every night you just come in, you check off things. And it didn't mean that the, the things outside of um, phase two, there were a couple of days where like, I think I, I had physical therapy for my shoulder on there because that's just constantly been a struggle. Um, so every time I'd go to the gym, I'd have, you know, 10 minutes. But then sometimes like, you know how if you go to the gym and there's already people in the gym and you don't or like in the basketball gym and you don't want to like miss out on the pickups. So sometimes I skipped it, but um I try to be as consistent as possible on getting that done. Uh, so yeah, it was really helpful and the visual and, and it really gave you that sense of like when you create a power list, like just being able to cross them off and that, that feeling of, okay, yep, I won the day. Here you go. Like that's all I need to do. And then on top to your point, like on top of that, I have my accountability group every week. I have to meet up on Monday and say, I checked off every single thing on this list. And then here's all the, the, the actual tasks, the big projects I want to get done. Here's what my results were. And so all of that compounded, it was just this big vortex of in cycle of, of, of consistency and, and habit building and um, like kind of a positivity loop that I kept checking it off and it kept giving me momentum. I kept checking it off and I gained more confidence and it just kept on and kept on. So you know, with all of that compounded with the accountability group, I mean, yeah, it was, it was game changing, man. And I think that's why I've been able to really turn the corner on 
keeping also keeping it going is is that accountability not only to you but to this these people that i'm in the group with there's six of us and we get on a zoom call every week and it's like if you show up and you don't have your shit done like there's a feedback channel on your on your on your spreadsheet and you will get feedback from all of us saying like like why you know yeah you have kids yeah you have this yeah you like you know you have to you you're not a, a morning person or you know what i mean you stay up too late like but like no excuse let's get it done what are your goals what's important what's your why you know and it's it goes that deep sometimes to where like if you don't show up with your shit done you're gonna get called out and that's what you really need i think in life too is just someone that's gonna like obviously love on you but not so much to that it starts to bring you down and it doesn't keep you accountable to what you really want um you need somebody that's also going to call you out with tough love as well uh because i think it's important yeah because god knows there's no way you're not going to do something if i'm on the same text message chain as you if you, right. if you don't come correct i'm gonna let you know when you're not coming correct and you actually said something quick side note here uh, i am not a morning person so back to the affirmations people say this all the time i am not a morning person so what that is is verbalizing the reality so you may think you're not a morning person but the second you say i am not a morning person you're now declaring to the world I am not a morning person, which is why it is so important to have the inverse. If you want, if you want to not be a morning person, you say, all right, I am a morning person. Even if you're not, then all of a sudden you're like, all right, well, what does a morning person do? Is the power of language is so, so important because I would then say, uh, I'm a masterpiece of health and energy and strength. So I am not a morning person. Everyone, please throw that in the trash. So as we wrap this up, ending mindset, for me, momentum, positive change, looking forward. Uh, for me, I start phase three, the final phase in 20 days. And I am so excited about this. And oh, by the way, it is going to be hard as crap when I saw all of the things that were on there. And guess what? I've already started working on the cultivating those habits. Why would I wait 20 more days to do the things that Andy says, by the way, these are probably help you in life. And I'm not leaving anything to chance. I'm not going to do something for the first time in the last 30 days of it. I'm going to do that now. I'm going to get ready for this bad boy so that I can crush this. Because one thing Andy said, which I haven't forgotten, it's burned into my head and I'm paraphrasing. He essentially said, we will find out who's been doing this correctly the entire time. That when you get to phase three, it wasn't 75 hard crash, phase one crash, phase two crash. No, like for me right now, I'm already in phase three mode. My standard is gigantic. So that when that, when I finish this and complete this, I'm going to look back and be like, I gave this my all. A hundred percent, man. I'm on the exact same page with you. Um, I'm already starting to cultivate those habits as well. Like I, you can see here, I got my little Starbucks. Um, I'll go in there and every time I see someone in there that I don't know, I'll say something to them or try to make a joke or start, start a conversation and some build some of those habits, um, doing a nice thing. Obviously, you know, unfortunately Portland is, is a little bit overrun with, uh, like the homeless and the drug situation here, but there's people on the street and it's cold sometimes. And, and, you know, um, I don't want to desensitize myself to it. So I like to buy a, a bottle of water every now and then for people just that are in need. So I've started to also do some of those, those things as well, just to build on those habits. Cause it is when you have to be consistent on that every single day, that will be tough. Like I, I can't lie about that. But if you're putting yourself in enough situations every day and being intentional about it, when you go to the gym, when you go to Starbucks, when you, when I'm at, we work, and I'm around the water coolers and in the kitchen. And, and like, I can, I can even get, I've even thought about, you know, starting to pack my lunch, putting my lunch in the fridge. So I always have a reason to go to the fridge. And like, you start to think about how can I accomplish this goal um, and be intentional. And it only makes you better at conversation and, and, and it, it builds your network and your, you know what I mean? Just gives you that confidence boost too. So especially if you're helping people along the way as well, which I think we could all use a little bit of a, an uptick on being intentional about the people around us and how we can serve our communities and things like that as well. So it's a huge thing.
And that's how we're going to wrap this up. Take note of the way that Brendan and I are thinking and acting right now. Let that sort of be, this is the end result of what happens is you're already planning things that haven't even happened yet to make ourselves and others better. So Brendan, love jamming with you. I love being on this journey with you. Where can everybody connect with you? Yeah, so I'm on Instagram uh, at Brendan Pettit, B-R-E-N-D-A-N. P-E-T-T-I-T. And uh, yeah, hit me up in the DMs, you know, comment, hashtag me, whatever. <laughs> I'll be and, available. And as always, I would love to hear from you. You can hit me up on all social media platforms at Rob Cressy. Do you have thoughts or questions about 75 hard, phase one, phase two? We would love to be a positive asset for you on your journey. That's why we are doing podcasts like this, sending tons of good vibes your way.